Good morning and welcome to Morning Talk on Channel 11. We welcome you if you're in Bangkok and we welcome you wherever you are in the Kingdom of Thailand. Today, throughout the Kingdom, people will be celebrating the birthday anniversary of Her Majesty the Queen of Thailand and everybody working with Morning Talk would like to join the rest of the country in extending to Her Majesty our warmest greetings on this very special day. This morning, of course, in Morning Talk, we will include travel. Valerie, too, will look at an interesting country this morning, Korea. And I'm very pleased indeed that Mr. Richard Brown has come to the program. Mr. Brown, I've been following so many articles about you ever since I came here to live in 1990 and always wanting to meet you and always wanting to know exactly what you were doing. What's the name of your company? Astro's Youngster Intelligence, or in Thai, Kroon Padak How many years have you been coming to Thailand? About 18. And how long have you lived here? Uh, this last stint, I have lived here about seven or eight years. What brought you here? This is the kingdom of the gemstone industry, capital of the gemstone industry and jewelry industry, and uh, it is also my favorite place in the world. Once you've been here, you fall in love, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I'm also married to a Thai. Well, you fell in love <laughs> in a double way. When you first came here, were you working with gemstones? Yes, I was. I was mostly buying them for uh, importing into the United States. Uh, and my hobby was the Castle Gemstone Talisman side, using gems for other purposes and adornment, and uh, trying to get to the bottom of that whole concept. But it's taken about 18 years to really unravel the whole mystery. What is the mystery? The mystery is the relationship between gemstones and other elements in nature and the nine planets recognized by the Sibirial or the Asian system of astrology. Mm -hmm. And that's just a very, very brief uh, explanation of it. How did you study it? Well, I was living with a monk for seven years in India prior to prior to that. Whereabouts in India? In Bindavan, India, which is about 80 kilometers outside of Delhi. It's a very sacred holy place, the birthplace of Lord Krishna, which is which is worshipped by millions of Hindus throughout the world. And uh, I went to live there at a time when there were no other foreigners there. No one spoke English. And uh, I stayed there for seven years studying Sanskrit. Why did you go there? Well, I was, there were several reasons. One of the reasons was to avoid the Vietnam War. Which, That's which, a good which at the time was was uh, bearing down heavily on me, and I, I had no interest whatsoever in, in uh, that war. <clears throat> and so I, uh, rather than go to Canada or some other place, I had already interest in uh, Sanskrit and, and Indology and in, in Asian philosophies and beliefs, and so I went to India to study. And you stayed seven years? Yes, seven years. Did you become involved with gemstones there at all? No, not at all. I, I never have even considered gemstones up until uh, reading the monastery. What happened was a good friend of mine, who I hadn't seen in years, <coughs> he discovered or was involved in the discovery of a secret ruby mine in South India. But he didn't speak any of the local languages and didn't know his way around, so he asked my help. He had gotten financial support from George Harrison and Peter Sellers, two celebrities from England, and he had uh, built uh, a cutting factory, and he needed me to, uh, to assist him in this. So my interest was immediately what do the Vedas or the Sanskrit books have to say about gems. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and every book I could get my hands on related gems to the planets. And so when I, when I ended up in Bangkok to, to, to get some of these stones cut for my friend, I checked out what I could in relation to the Western point of view, and they have gemstones for months and anniversaries and, and so many purposes. But they have no explanation whatsoever as to why these stones are believed to have any powers or how they have powers or where these powers come from or how to channel them. They're, they're just basically uh, a, a big void there in, in that question. But the, but the Eastern point of view was that there are nine planets, they, they're traveling through space at varying speeds, they're pushing energy just like a truck that goes past you pushes energy. They're pushing electromagnetic energy, gravitational energy, they're pushing color, color waves that are measured in long wavelengths and short wavelengths. Mm -hmm. And these energies affect the cosmos. And even as we sit here, sit here talking right now, how, I wonder how many people really consider that this planet that we're sitting on so comfortably is flying through space at extremely high speed, mm -hmm. is, 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 is intermingling with other planets around the sun, you know, in the midst of so many other uh, material bodies, and all these planets are pushing energy, electromagnetic and gravitational and color, color energy, 
who are the cosmos and effect, and they're affecting each other. And so the science of how these planets affect humans and animals and plants, and, and how the, the humans, animals, and plants are, are, are affected by the elements in nature as they relate to those planets, mm. that's the science of geology, as I understand it. It's very, very complicated. Very complicated. And right. now it's become further complicated by the fact that you use the word talisman. Mm -hmm. Where does that fit into it all? I've taken the word talisman from the Sanskrit dictionary, this of course the Sanskrit dictionary. They use the word kavacha, which literally means a shield, like to block, to ward off some evil. But it also means amulet, it also means talisman. Talisman is, the, is probably the, the least understood, but the most popular of the, of the three choices I had. So I, I, I went ahead to use talisman to give the uh, understanding that we're using gemstones not just for personal adornment, but for their powers as well. So do you look at each stone and say that this stone has a particular power? Yes, I do, and, and whether or not that power is good or bad, depending on the quality of the stone. Can the same power be good or bad for everybody, or does it depend on the relationship between the stone and the person? No, the relationship between the stars and the person. You can say, you can say as an example, uh, you look at a person's sidereal or eastern horoscope, and you say, oh, all right, the sun, at the time of their birth, was positioned in, in Aries, in the, in, the, in, the, in the zodiac or Ar Rossi sign of Aries. Well, that's maximum strength. Out of the 12 zodiac signs that the sun could be positioned in, it was positioned in Aries, maximum strength. That means for that person, the sun is very beneficial. Now, for, for another person, the sun might be uh, located in a debilitated zodiac sign, which is 180 degrees mm -hmm. opposite, which means that for that person, the sun is not beneficial. They'll be lacking in courage, they'll be lacking in, in determination, and they won't be, they will be very timid. The person with a very strong son will have the opposite uh, personality. He'll be very bold and courageous. And, and uh, now, if the son is in other 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 zodiac signs that that denote other things, like uh, weak either either weak conditioned or strong conditioned, uh, it will give different effects. So we before if we're going to recommend uh, a, a ruby or a red stone mm -hmm. or a sunstone for someone, we have to first of all see is the sun favorable to them. And it's as simple as this: lucky planet equals lucky stone. Isn't that fascinating? I, I think so. I think it's very, very fascinating. When I began reading articles about you in the Bangkok newspapers, I was interested, and I can see how people could become more and more involved. And people must be thinking now before they buy a stone. Well, a lot of the people that we have come across, even though they understand or they believe that we're onto something here. We've, we, we have not invented or created this. We've simply uncovered it. Yes. It's, it's an ancient science. It's already in the Sanskrit books for thousands of years. But they don't realize that <clears throat> quality is very important. And, and I give an example of eyeglasses. Eyeglasses can be explained. They have a power. They, they enhance the, uh, a person's vision. But if they're cracked, then they might, be, they might as well have no glasses at all. So mm -hmm. a cracked gemstone is considered by the Vedas, the ancient Sanskrit books, to be harmful and to have no good effects in the same way that a cracked radio crystal is not going to pick up the radio waves and transmit them properly. So a cracked gemstone, if you look upon it as a crystal uh, that's picking up uh, astral waves or color, color energy waves, it is not going to uh, work properly if it's defective. And so many people are using defective stones, even rich people. I see, I see, I see even very wealthy ties with great big rubies that are no better than a brick. <laughs> I, and I, and I, they ask me what I think. I say you should bury it back in the, in, in the ground. Don't even give it to your worst enemy. Mr. Brown, people can consult with you, can't they? Yes, they can. Mm -hmm. In balcony building? Yes, in uh, Langsan Balcony. In Soi Lang Suan. Mm -hmm. You would not believe the trouble that I had. First, I was wanting to talk to you when you were in Silom, and I didn't get through, and I couldn't get through. And then, because Kun Valerie's office is in balcony building in Soi Lang Suan, mm -hmm. I saw your name, and I thought, now we can talk about it in morning talk. Determination pays off. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for coming to the program okay. this morning. Anyone that's born a Capricornian like I am, and in fact with Capricorn rising, is sure to be determined. People say that we are the goats that climb to the top of the Rocky Mountain. When we get to the top, we look at the view and say, it's wonderful. What will I do next? Next, I'm very pleased indeed to welcome Valerie McKenzie and her guest, who this morning will take you to Korea.